Hi, I'm Noah, and I'm going to be building a game controller. My my own game controller. Um, kind of like these ones, except I want this one to work on absolutely every PC game. So if this project goes right, it should work on Grand Theft Auto, Cyberpunk, Assassin's Creed, Civilization, Portal 2, Microsoft Minesweeper, Solitaire, Jigsaw Puzzles, I don't know, everything. And it's gonna be great. So, all of my game controllers right now are look like this. I've got one uh, PS4 controller and one Xbox 360, uh, Xbox One X, Xbox, Xbox Series X, Xbox X, they all look the damn same. I think this is an Xbox One controller. Doesn't really matter. Um, but I'm going to be basing it off of these two. Since these ones are red, naturally, I'm going to make mine purple. And yeah, so I ordered the, the parts for it. I'm going to be ordering some joysticks. Uh, it's going to be based off an Arduino. And I think it's going to work really well. The, as, far, as for the whole, it's going to work with every game thing. I have a plan that I think is going to work for that. But we're just going to have to see how well that works. So the plan is to use a very similar idea to the gesture mouse here, which if you haven't seen this video, I mean, I mean, you can go watch it if you want. It's, it's kind of a shit video, but you can go watch it if you feel like it. Lisa says it's not a shit video. It's a, it's a wonderful video. You should definitely go watch it. But the plan is very similar to this. So I'm going to be using an Arduino with a more advanced processor in it than an Arduino Uno or an Arduino Mega or any of those ones. It's got one of the faster ones in it. So I'm going to use another Arduino with a sort of processor. I'm hoping to use a Pro Micro or Leonardo maybe. We're going to find out. And that has an 80 mega 32U4, which um, allows it to be faster and better and cooler and nicer and fancier. Um, but most importantly, it allows it to use a library called Xmouse. I think it's called Xmouse. It allows it to use the mouse library. Um, and the mouse library lets it, lets it be a mouse, if you hadn't guessed that already. So it allows it to emulate a mouse and, and a keyboard. And to emulate a mouse and a keyboard. So that's how this worked, is that... Um, it's got a little gyroscope in it, and it, it, it acts as a mouse when you plug it into the computer. It goes, hey, I'm a mouse. I'm moving around. Click, clicky. Um, and that's basically what the game controller is going to do. When you move uh, this stick, it's going to do WASD, and I'm going to do it with pulse width modulation. And so it'll be like, if you press it a little bit, if all goes well, it should like feather the W. Press it a little bit this way, it should feather the A, whatever. Um, these guys are going to be your mouse pressing buttons. So if you press here, it's going to be a digital trigger. I know, not as good, but if you if you press here, it's going to like click on the mouse. So if you're playing like a shooty game, it'll be like shoot, 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 shoot. And you can like aim, pew, 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 pew. Um, and so it'll emulate all the keyboard and mouse controls of like a standard video game, like your, your shift, your control, your E, your F, whatever ones you want. So you could play a game like like Grand Theft Auto, or Civ 6, or Microsoft Solitaire, whatever game you want to play, you could play using this thing, provided that either the controls are like pretty standard-ish, or that you can remap the controls, because um, if the control is like, oh, H is horn, then you're going to have to like remap H to be a more logical button like E or F. Um, and it, obviously this is only going to work with a PC, it's not going to <laughs> it's not going to work on a console, but that doesn't matter. Those suck. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> that's so going in the video. <laughs> so that's the plan. So the idea is I've ordered some parts online. I ordered some um, micro switches for triggers. So they're just, they're kind of cool. They'll work. Uh, I ordered some buttons. So I'm actually, I, this might be a little controversial to some of you, but I hate D-pads. So I've just ordered eight of these buttons. I'm replacing D-pads with more face buttons. So you'll have like triangle, X, square, circle, hexagon, octagon, rectangle. I don't know, I'll label them something. But um, it'll, it'll, it'll work like that. And then you have two, we're gonna have two thumbsticks. Um, and you'll have your shoulder buttons. It'll be all the same buttons. I mean, the same layout, exactly the same layout, but you're gonna have no D-pad. Um, which will be lovely because honestly, guys, D-pads suck. And then it'll be 
So you plug into micro USB and it'll play with the computer. I'm not doing Bluetooth because I don't like Bluetooth. So I'm going to be doing it with no Bluetooth. And it's only 3D printed. It's going to look great. And um, yeah, let's just, let's get to the video and let's, let's make this thing. So I'm going to start by doing a hell of a lot of measurements and 3D printing a chassis. And then we're just going to hope that it works. So the first thing I did was uh, take a caliper and measure all my components and the old PS4 controller to try and determine where all my component spacing is going to be. And then I ended up, you know, creating a CAD model. I loosely based it on the position of the PS4 controller's buttons and stuff, but they didn't always fit because, like, spacing of the components underneath and stuff. And really, this I, I should be using a PCB for this if I was going to be doing it right. But I want this to be something that's approachable for the everyday person to do without having a, you know, $20,000 PCB etching facility in their basement. Now, after I measured all that, I started printing pieces out. I started with the face of the controller and the handles, uh, which you can see here in this clip. And I installed all the buttons and joysticks on the face and then glued it into the handles. Uh, the other thing you might notice here is that there is a notoriously small amount of space for the electronics inside. That's going to come back to haunt me later. Uh, I then wired that all up to work and soldered on the Arduinos and stuff. Then I printed out these nacelles and I bent my micro switches actually because I didn't want to have a straight trigger. I want to have a, a slightly curved trigger that will conform to the organic shape of your fingers and whatever other marketing buzzwords I can fit in there. So I bent those using a pair of pliers and just slap, slap them on and glue those little suckers in place. I then soldered those on to the Arduinos as well. We're using two Arduino micros here. Um, that is because, as I mentioned earlier, they have the nice fancy processor that can use the mouse library. There actually aren't enough digital pins on one Arduino micro in order for this thing to work properly. So I needed two of them. I thought of using a bigger Arduino, but I needed to use an Arduino Due for this, and that is just, it's, it's just too big. An Arduino Geo would just be huge in this. And I only had one piece left to make, and that piece is just basically the top, the top piece. I then stuck that in. It's got these bars here that go into the holes on the micro switches. So I just inserted those, clipped it in, and glued it. It's not quite straight as I, I'm not sure. I think my tolerances were just a little bit off. I actually realized at this point that I, I'm not gonna be able to fit my Arduinos inside the controller itself, as that cavity is just way too small. So they're just gonna kind of dangle out the bottom there, uh, which should be okay. You know, it, it'll work. Um, again, this is not a f final product by any stretch of the imagination. The other slightly annoying thing is um, that there are actually two micro USB ports, again, one for each Arduino, and each of, these Arduino each of these Arduinos controls one side of the controller. So the left side here, is completely independent of the right-hand side. So they're just, the Arduinos are completely wired up separately. I mean, I guess that could be a feature if you just want to use your WASD and then you want to use like a mouse for your aiming. I don't know why you'd want that, but if you do want that, it, it's a feature. It's also got these triggers here, which are the micro switches. As I mentioned earlier, they are digital triggers. Um, I love these. These are really nice. Like they just, they're, they're very loud, but like that's just, it's so satisfying. Um, speaking of the buttons though, these green buttons, awful. They looked good on the online listing, but they're just, they're so mushy. Like just have a look at that. There's no, there's no click or anything satisfying. And they just kind of mush down. It's really horrible. Uh, these sticks are quite nice. They've each got a button inside them. Um, and I actually decided not to do the pause buttons because well, uh, because I ran out of space. Uh, there's no, there's not a lot of space inside the thing in order to fit them. So I had to kind of cancel those. You know, given this is going to be used with a computer at all times, I figured you could always just reach over and you know, hit the escape button to pause the game. Uh, so as far as the uh, code works, uh, according to a brief test I did, it actually works on all this. So the WASD thing sort of, you know, feathers it. All these buttons do their appropriate thing. It actually does work exactly as I thought it was going to work, which is awesome. Um, but it remains to be seen how it will perform in the game. So uh, without further ado, let's skip to that and uh, we'll find out. 
we did a couple practice races, um, but now we are going to do the real thing. Lisa is going to be representing the PS4 controller, and I'm going to be representing the purple one. Thanks. Mm. So you can go for hot pink this time. Um, yes, because I thought I was switching the color when I was <laughs> switching the car. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is dark. Well, not this is dark. It's very good. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Oh, oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. Uh, so the, um, turning in jumps is very difficult. Oh no. Oh wait, no. Yes, yes, yes. That was, that was close. I'm on another Oh yeah, 90 degree jump. Yes, there you go. Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot. I've got control of that. Oh, oh well that was just that. I stick the landing. At least it was a lot more. <laughs> Stuck the landing. Ish. Not really. Not at all. Not really. But the I'm nice, two thirds of the way. 90 degree jump was like two thirds of the way. And you passed that. Oh my. Okay, I know, I know, I know, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, yeah, this, this is not, I'm not gonna finish. I am not gonna finish. I couldn't even see the finish on my thing. Candy Okay, this time, this time a little purple. I sound, I like that sound. Oh, yeah, 
single race, but maybe I can, maybe, not only did I not lose, I didn't finish any of the races. Maybe I can make up for it here. And I have a very hard games and that that's 
kind of it. Uh, back to back to regular Nella to talk about the other stuff. So those results weren't exactly promising. However, it did do everything that I set out for it to do. Now, this is by no means a perfect game controller. And that is, well, for many reasons. I mean, companies like Microsoft and Sony spend long, long times, you know, perfecting these things and making sure the compatibility is right and all that stuff. And I'm just sitting here kind of emulating a keyboard in a project that took me a month. So it's not exactly a, um, you know, a high budget project. However, this was surprisingly successful. Um, it controlled very much like a keyboard and mouse would, as you would think, kind of weirdly so. Uh, the aiming was way more intuitive in the shooting portion of our trials. That is mostly down to the fact that this is way less sensitive. So I had a hard time panning my camera around, which did make um, the race driving much less fluid. Uh, however, it made the shooting way easier and I'd gone for a compromise between the two of them and I thought that kind of worked out. The main issue with this is that on this controller, you're not just simply mapping keyboard buttons to controls, right? When you're driving, this and this become W and S. That's not the case on this guy. And so you're driving with this very weird sort of kind of way of doing things. And it was a bit finicky, but it was good. And these triggers were really, really excellent, especially in the shooting pool. Well, only in the shooting portion because they weren't really used in the other portion. All in all, I'd say this does not beat out the PS4 controller, obviously, but it came way closer than I thought it would, and I am pleasantly surprised that the purple thing managed to do so well. I'm still not sure if I love the purple and green or hate it. I think I hate it, but whatever. If you've got a game that you for some reason want to play with a controller, but it isn't supported, you know, this might be a viable option. Might. And I will post all my stuff in the description if you want to make a project like this or something, I don't know. I'll, I'll put it there just in case you want it for whatever reason. If you enjoyed this video, great. And if you want to check out more, there's more stuff. I'll have it linked on the screen somewhere. And uh, feel free to subscribe if you like. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>